It's been a record-setting run for the Nashville Predators, who have won five road games in a row, and there are three very specific reasons why they're having this success. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Of course, want to kick off this Monday episode the way we start all of our episodes, and that is with a shout out to our Locked On Predheads, our everyday listeners who tune in to talk all things Nashville Predators hockey with us. We love that we get to spend a little bit of time with you in your day. And we thank you so much for your support. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer at the Hockey News. I'm usually joined by my partner in crime, Nick Morgan. Nick will be back next week. We have so much that we need to cover in today's Monday episode. Of course, we need to dive into this Nashville Predators record-setting 5-0 road trip And we also want to touch on Milwaukee Admirals. Their record-setting win streak came to an end this weekend. We're going to talk about that and what we can take away from Milwaukee's run that may reflect on the Predators' future. So, so much to get to, but before we dive into all that, I do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Well, it was a big hockey weekend for Nashville Predators fans between back-to-back games in California for the Predators and back-to-back games for the Milwaukee Admirals who have been on that major AHL win streak. But we are going to kick everything off talking about what is happening with the Nashville Predators. The Predators on Sunday night wrapped up their five-game road trip with back-to-back games this weekend out west. On Saturday, they got the four to two win over the San Jose Sharks last night got a four to two win over the Anaheim Ducks so what do we learn from these last two games of the five game road trip that kind of sealed this five and oh road win well I think the first thing we need to acknowledge is that the games against San Jose and Anaheim were not by any stretch of the imagination Nashville's best hockey that they played this season there were definitely stretches of time in each of these games where this looked like a Predators team at the end of a five game road trip but they really did what they needed to do to get these wins. And this is a tough way to end a road trip. You wouldn't think so. You would think if you could kind of lay out an ideal road trip, you want to get your hard teams out of the way first and then end with some teams that maybe aren't as high in the standings. But I think that can lead to what we always refer to as trap games. And I've asked Andrew Burnett before earlier in the season, do you believe in trap games? And he said, doesn't necessarily believe in trap games, but he believes there are always games that you can be unprepared for. And I think the games against San Jose and Anaheim kind of set you up for that. You're tired um, from the travel, of course. You're tired from playing three really difficult playoff contention teams and getting those wins. And you have to really stay in a good mental space. You have to stay in that highly competitive mental space. And you have to find the physical energy to get through those last two games, especially when they are back to back. The Predators kicked off this road trip with wins against uh, St. Louis, the Vegas Golden Knights, and LA Kings. You know, those are three challenging teams for the Predators to beat. And then you have to come back, and no matter what your opponent's record looks like, you have to be able to replicate that level. And there were times where maybe we saw the Predators struggle to replicate that high level of competition. And maybe that um, physical speed and physicality in those games. But what really it came down to, especially last night against Anaheim in the third period, is Nashville found that next gear. They went from looking like a team that was a little bit tired to a team that's like, no, we are going to finish the strong. And that's exactly what they did. Here, of course, at Lockdown Predators, we love to summarize games with one word to describe the game. But today, we're going to just share one word 
to describe this entire five game road trip for the Predators. And for me, my one word is maturity. And I think you saw this team really mature from before this road trip kicked off to where the team is now. You know, over the road trip, the team has gone from being, you know, a one line offensive team, a team where you see players who show glimpses of potential. You see a team that went from having players who were working hard to get back to a level. And you saw a team that kicked off this road win, really battling inconsistency. And all of a sudden, at the end of this road game, you see a team that is heading in the right direction, up and down the lineup. Everybody is pulling on the rope kind of in the same direction, which is a metaphor that we heard in post game a couple of times on this road trip. So I think you see a team that's very unified. I think you see a team where everybody is really capitalizing on what they bring to the table. And you see a maturity to this team, a team that understands, wait a minute, this is where we are and this is what it takes. I asked on Twitter, hey, what is your one word to describe this five game road win? And Christina at Wayward Blade 24 said electrifying. And I love that word because this five game road trip really has been exciting. And I think if you look back where this team was 10 days ago after losing to Dallas nine to two at home with a performance that was nothing short of absolutely abysmal, this is really electrifying. I think it's unexpected. I think there is a lot to be excited about when you see how these five wins have come about. So I like that word. KC Preds fan at Preds KC said conflicting. And I can't argue with that because you have to ask yourself, okay, what is happening with this Nashville Predators team? Like this does not look like the same team that lost to the Dallas Stars. You know, this does not look like the same team that just was maybe going to make the playoffs. You know, how do you change so much after a 10-day period? Is this sustainable? And hey, what does this mean for the playoffs and the deadline? You know, yes, you want to see this Predators team succeed, but also you want to keep the long game in mind too. So I think it's kind of hard to, you know, know what to expect next from the Nashville Predators. I think there are three things that have come together over this road trip that have made the biggest difference when it comes to the Nashville Predators having success. The first thing, goaltending. And this is something we have talked about at Locked On Preds for all season long. We know UC Saros has really had an up and down season. You know, his season statistics, 2.95 goals against average, a 904 save percentage. Those are his worst statistics in, in his career for a season. Over these three games, granted small sample size, but over these three games, his performance has been so much better. He has a 943 save percentage. 1.67 goals against allowed. He has allowed only five goals in the three games of this five game road trip. And it's not even so much uh, his statistics as it is the situation that he was put in. You know, you play against the St. Louis Blues. When the Predators faced off against the Blues, the Blues were eight and two in their last 10 games. They had just beaten the Edmonton Oilers six to three. So the Blues were feeling very, very good about their game. They were executing well when the Predators came in and got that win. The LA Kings, another team that was performing so well when the Predators went there to face them. They were five and one since the coaching change at the All-Star break. LA Kings had found their groove, it seemed like, and Nashville had to go in and face them. You know, I know that there has been a lot of talk about UC Soros and Yaroslav Askarov in the trade deadline, but I don't want to overlook Kevin Lankinen. And this is a player that I think has not probably gotten as much attention because, again, statistically, maybe not his best uh, three 15 goals against average 903 save percentage on the season. He played two games of this road trip. Uh, he faced the Vegas Golden Knights, which is no easy task. He also played last night against Anaheim. He had a 9-10 save percentage in those two games. So I think you want to give credit to UC Saros. We're seeing consistency from him over this road trip. We're seeing vintage Saros saves. 
But you also have to give credit to Kevin Lankinen, who can jump in over a five-game stretch and be such an effective backup goaltender. I'm actually really surprised that we aren't hearing more talk about Lankinen coming up at the trade deadline. I know Soros is going to bring the biggest return. I know teams are probably dying to talk to Barry Trotz about Soros and Askarov. But I wonder if Kevin Lankinen is a name that's maybe going to start generating some phone calls for teams that are in the playoffs but no, we need a little better in net because Kevin Lankinen, that is your guy. Definitely goaltending has been a big part of Nashville's success over this stretch. Coming up, I'm going to share with you two other reasons why the Predators have been so good on this five-game road trip. And of course, we are going to talk about that Milwaukee Admirals game as well. I want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Camino Consulting. You've heard of their online families and couples course and hopefully taken advantage of the locked on 25% off discount running to the end of the month. But what about their live seminars? In both sports and business, the challenge in differentiating candidates and recruits is an endless battle. Everyone can demonstrate their measurables and qualifications, but we all know that it's the intangibles that matter when those things are similar. Contact Camino Consulting for their team and management seminars to get a peek behind the curtain and watch your next recruiting class or hiring group become one of the most effective you've ever seen. Both because you've identified the right candidates and because you've learned how to communicate and motivate them in accord with their own preferences. But you aren't in business management or working with a team? We pay referrals. Make some money making your workspace in favorite teams better. Every group works together better at the end of year one than week one. So contact Camino Consulting at CaminoConsulting.ca and get on the fast track to understanding. Again, check them out at CaminoConsulting.ca. Nashville Predators just wrapped up their five-game road streak, 5-0. and Now they're getting ready for a five-game homestand, and that's been a little bit of a different situation. On tomorrow's show, we're going to preview Tuesday night's game against the Ottawa Senators. We're also going to talk about why have the Nashville Predators struggled so much at home. There's a lot to unpack there. Right now, though, we're going to keep concentrating on these five road wins and what has made the difference for the Nashville Predators in this stretch. We talked about better goaltending. Let's talk about depth scoring. In this five-game road trip, the Nashville Predators have had 15 different goal scorers, including five who have had two or more goals over these five games. You know, for so long, we've talked about the fact that Nashville is was relying too heavily on their top line. And while Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gus Nyquist have been exceptional at times, I think we all knew that that was not going to be one line that can carry this team the entire season. Teams were really onto the Nashville Predators. I don't think you had to be Scooby-Doo to figure out like the way to beat the Predators is shut down that top line because none of the other lines was really generating much. Well, that changed over this road trip. And I think there's a couple of factors that went into helping this depth scoring kind of take off. You know, for one thing, I think some of these younger players, some of these UFAs really understand where they're at at this point in the season. Barry Trotz is making evaluations right now, and he's talked about the fact that he wants to give these players and these UFAs, these young guys, as much runway as he can before he makes long-term decisions and I think the players understand, hey, we're getting down to the wire. If I want to be a piece for the Nashville Predators long term, I've got to show that right now. And I think Barry Trotz wants to say, hey, if I'm thinking about trading you, show me what your value is. And so you're seeing these depth players step up. I also think there's more to it than just understanding the situation. Andrew Brunette has talked this season about players like Tommy Novak and Luke Evangelista who have maybe struggled to finish at times. And that's been something that we've talked about here. So many great chances, quality looks, not finishing. And when that happens, especially when you are just kind of settling into your NHL career, Andrew Burnett said, look, you get players who kind of grip the sticks a little tight because you're not finding the back of the net. And you start to think maybe I'm snake bit. Um, you start relying so much on the statistics of goals and assists that you forget about the little other aspects of the 200-foot game where you can be contributing. 
And we've seen that with Novak and Evangelista. I think that they have been a little bit hesitant. I think they've waited for the perfect shot. They've been hesitant because they haven't found the back of the net. Well, that has changed. In his last 10 games, Tommy Novak has 10 points and six goals. Luke Evangelista scored two goals, three points in this five-game road trip. And what you're seeing is those players, especially playing very differently, playing with more confidence, playing with more freedom, and really allowing themselves to rely again on instinct instead of thinking. And I think that really frees up their creativity as playmakers. And I think it sort of takes that pressure off them. And you're seeing like when that pressure is off, when they've broken through and gotten that goal, they realize, okay, it's going to keep coming. Another thing that I think you cannot overemphasize is how important during these five games it has been that the Nashville Predators had consistent lines. In these five games, Nashville has skated the same four lines and same defensive pairings every time. The only lineup changes was Saros in, Lankanen in. That was it. And that is the longest stretch of consistent lines that we've seen from the Predators this season. And it's not, <coughs> it's not just that they're consistent. It's that the combinations really seem to make sense. You look at Cody Glass with Colton Sissons. Like, I love that combination. They're playing with Yakov Trenin. Don't know what's going to happen with Yakov Trenin um, when it comes to the trade deadline or comes to next season. But when you look at these three together, I really like what they're doing. And I think Cody Glass, even though he's typically more of a center, he's playing on the wing, he's really thriving. And you see him back to last season's Cody Glass because he's playing with Colton Sissons. And Colton Sissons makes everybody a better player when they play with him. The other line that I think really deserves a shout out is that Novak, Jankowski, Evangelista line. You know, you have to wonder, is Mark Jankowski ever going to go back to Milwaukee or are they going to keep him here? Because that line is really chawing along well. Um, you are seeing so much more from Luke Evangelista's game, you know, not just shooting and more um, offensive creativity, but you are seeing him be much more aggressive when it comes to hunting pucks, being creative. Mark Jankowski certainly adds a level of physicality. His game has always sort of been known more for his defense. But now you're seeing this offensive side of Mark Jankowski kind of grow in his game. Same thing with Tommy Novak. You know, like I said, he's got 10 points in these last 10 games. He's got six goals. This is a line that is really building a lot of chemistry. And they're kind of covering all the bases that you need from a line where you've got some defensive responsibility. You've got that puck hunting and you've got that finishing and creative playmaking. Now, one line in particular. I want to give a shout out that I think has been the key to success for the Predators through this five game road streak. And it's not the top line of Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gus Nyquist. I'm talking about the fourth line Kiefer Sherwood, Michael McCarron, and Cole Smith. The fourth line has three game winning goals in these five wins. And I think this is just an incredible testament to these guys as individuals and their collective talent together. Kiefer Sherwood is a UFA. Kiefer Sherwood has been a healthy scratch in 10 of 17 games leading up to this road trip from January 1st on. But you would never know that watching Kiefer Sherwood in practice. Kiefer Sherwood practices like he is a top line guy playing 20 minutes a game. He is always working hard. He's never taking any practice time off. He is always pushing himself to be better. And I think that's such an ingrained part of Sherwood's identity. This is a hard working player. He may not out uh, may not out talent someone. He may not have as much creative playmaking, but he is one of those players who's just simply not going to be outworked. You know, he does have a lot of speed, which is something that I think complements this style of play pretty well. He's very strong physically. I think he sees play as well. He does struggle to finish sometimes. So it was really exciting to see him get some goals in this five-game road trip. You know, I know sometimes he can play himself into penalties, but I think that's something that he can work out of. 
So in, it'll be interesting to see what this stretch is going to mean for Kiefer Sherwood. Again, he is a UFA. This is a win-win. His performance is going to be beneficial one way or the other. For one, you may have found a line that Barry Trost says, you know what, this is a line I want to keep together through the playoffs and maybe give Kiefer Sherwood the rest of the season to show me that he can consistently play this well. Or if you decide that Kiefer Sherwood is a piece that can be a part of a trade, his trade value has just increased by what he's been able to do over this five-game stretch. I don't know that Kiefer Sherwood is going to be a long-term piece, but I think he is doing everything he can to make Barry Trotz really think about it. Also got to shout out Michael McCarron. I know everybody squawked when Michael McCarron was re-signed. Let this run explain once again why you want Michael McCarron on your roster. Michael McCarron plays in the hard areas. He chases and hunts down pucks. He is very physical. He has a huge net front presence. And whether that means cleaning up loose goals and scoring or providing a six foot six inch screen in front of a goaltender, this is a guy you want there. This run has helped Michael McCarron set a career high in goals, assists, and points, and he is not done yet. He's also gotten much better defensively. He's an important piece on the penalty kill as well. Cole Smith, another player that people didn't necessarily want Barry Trotz to re-sign. He has career highs in goals and points, including three shorthanded goals, five shorthanded points. What I think is so interesting about this fourth line is that this fourth line is made up of two undrafted players in Smith and Sherwood, and they're playing with a first-round draft pick in Michael McCarron, but they are changing games for the Nashville Predators. So after the Anaheim game, Andrew Brunette talked about what is it about this fourth line that is giving them success, and he and Michael McCarron answered that question. This is what they had to say. Well, I think it's, it's, it's it, one, they've been great. They've a little bit been our identity here through this trip where they're relentless, they're on pucks, they're long, they're fast, and they have some skill. And I think they set the tone of a lot of our games on this trip. Um, and it's, again, so important for our group. We're, we're getting some secondary scoring. You know, the big line's been great all year. Still scored a big goal tonight, but it's nice to see that, that those other lines starting to come a little bit. Well, we got two fast guys on my wing. Um, you know, it's... When, when you play with speed and, and pace and uh, winning puck battles down low, um, taking pucks to the net, finishing our checks, I think we can wear down teams. And uh, by the third period, I mean, um, they really don't want to go back for pucks. I mean, it's, it's, it's annoying when you got got guys in your ear and um, on your back all, all game. Um, I think we were able to do a pretty good job of that on this road trip and, um, you know, help our team win. It uh, feels good to help our team win. I love what Michael McCarron talks about. It's annoying. And I think the nicer way to say that is that this is a line that is relentless for the Nashville Predators. And big picture, when you look at the four lines that have played over this five-game stretch, they are getting pretty equal ice time, which tells you that Andrew Burnett likes what he is seeing from this lineup top to bottom. And we haven't seen that before during this season for the Nashville Predators. Coming up, while the Predators set that franchise record road win, five-game win streak this weekend, the Milwaukee Admirals franchise win streak ended. We're going to talk about how that ended, and we're also going to preview the Predators week ahead coming up. First, want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by our great friends at Sleeper. So regardless of where the Nashville Predators are in the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether players like Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, or Cole Smith will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, save, hits, and more in any given game. To win 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. That's right. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use our promo code locked on NHL and you're going to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availabilities. 
The Nashville Predators have some big games coming up at home. We're going to talk about what's ahead in just a minute. And of course, on tomorrow's show, we're going to take a closer look at tomorrow night's game against the Ottawa Senators. First, want to check in with our Milwaukee Admirals. The Milwaukee Admirals also had back-to-back games this weekend, and the games came with some highs and some lows. Saturday, the Admirals faced off against the Chicago Wolves, and they got that win. One of the cool moments in the game, Cal O'Reilly became the Milwaukee Admirals' all-time leading scorer with a goal in that game. They had a great tribute video to him. Really an amazing testament to a player who has played all over, but really has invested so much of his career with the Nashville Predators franchise and with the Milwaukee Admirals. So I want to give a shout out to Cal O'Reilly, and I know they got him that puck. I hope it goes somewhere amazing and special. Sunday, the Milwaukee Admirals faced off against the Grand Rapids Griffins, and we knew this was going to be a tough game because the Grand Rapids Griffins were coming into the game on a 14-game point streak. This is the Detroit affiliate. Of course, we know that the Milwaukee Admirals had won 19 straight in a row. This was going to be a really good game. It was a tough game. Grand Rapids got up two to nothing after the first period. They got a power play goal in the second period and then a really quick goal after that at five on five to make it four nothing. And it was just one of those games where you were like, man, The Milwaukee Admirals are really struggling to push back. Yaroslav Askarov gave up four goals on 17 shots through the second period. But then the uh, Milwaukee Admirals kind of found their game. Liam Foodie got a breakaway goal with less than four minutes to go in the second. And then Cody Hodgson scores 15 seconds later to make it four to two. The Admirals were back in it, but they couldn't get anything going in the third period. And the final score was four to two. Milwaukee's win streak ended at 19 games. Now, can't do anything but say way to go. It was really incredible. Don't be sad that it's over. Let's all just be happy it happened. There were definitely some factors that went into this loss. Again, Grand Rapids is on a great run themselves. This is a really good team. Uh, The Admirals also didn't have Jordan Gross. Uh, Of course, Igor Afanasiev, Mark Jankowski up in Nashville. Just want to let you know that we believe that Igor Afanasiev has been reassigned to Milwaukee as of this afternoon. We're going to follow up with that on tomorrow's show. Also, no Fedor Svechkov. Svechkov was injured in a game last week, out four to six weeks with a lower body injury. So I think that there is a lot that went into kind of why the team didn't get that win on Sunday. But again, you just can't walk away from this feeling anything but excited about what this team did what this team is going to do, and what this means for the Nashville Predators when you have players like Svechkov and Afanasiev and Joachim Kimmel and Yaroslav Askarov playing those kind of games and getting that many wins. Now, the Milwaukee Admirals are on a nice little break. They're going to be back in action on March 1st at home against the Rockford Ice Hogs. Again, loved what you saw from this team, not just because they dominated in all 19 games, but because there were a lot of those wins where this Admirals team had to find their way. They had to kind of claw their way into a win where maybe they weren't playing their best hockey or they were playing a team with a little bit more speed or talent, but they found ways to get wins. And I think that is something that is really encouraging about that experience for these young players. So let's see what comes next. Again, Zachary LaRue, I thought he has played really well in this stretch. Liam Foodie, who we saw for a little bit in Nashville, really been using his speed, played well in this. Uh, Yuso Parson and Phil Tomasino have been important parts of this stretch run since they were reassigned there. Let's see what happens with their game and see what happens if they return back up to Nashville when they do. Also, great goaltending from Yaroslav Askarov and Troy Grosnick, who is often overlooked Um, But wow, he has been really great too. Now, Nashville Predators back here at home for five games in a row. Let's see what they can do. And look, these are not going to just be easy games. We're kind of looking at at a challenging stretch 
like they just went through on the road. Tomorrow night, they play the Ottawa Senators. You know, I know Ottawa may not have a great record. They may not be high in the standings, but let's not forget they beat the Predators in overtime. This is also a roster with plenty of talent. So we're going to take a closer look tomorrow at that team and what the Predators will need to do to get that win. After Ottawa, later this week, they're going to be playing John Hines in the Minnesota Wild. And this is a game that's going to have a high, uh, high intensity level. These are big playoff points on the line. Again, you've got John Hines returning to Bridgestone Arena. Now we know how that went the last time when he was back at Bridgestone Arena, but let's see what the Predators can do. And then Saturday at home against the Colorado Avalanche. Friends, this is going to be a huge game. Saturday night game. Five o'clock start time, just focusing ahead. Five o'clock start time instead of seven Saturday night against the Avalanche. This may be the game that tells us the most about this Nashville Predators team. Of course, Ottawa and the game against Minnesota going to be challenging. But I think, okay, let's measure ourselves against the Colorado Avalanche and see where this Predators team stacks up. The following week, they're going to play Montreal and Buffalo. So again, it's that same three challenging games and then two games that should be fairly easy, but the Predators are going to have to be ready and kind of fend off that trap game situation. So the Predators have to figure out a way to convert all of the momentum that they've built on this road trip into wins at home. We're going to talk about tomorrow, what do they need to do to do that? And what has been the problem at Bridgestone Arena? There's it's been a whole thing with, with home wins. So we're going to dive into that tomorrow on Locked on Predators podcast. That is going to do it for Monday's episode. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where we preview Ottawa Senators. We'll see you then.